after the 1921. All right, I'm here today with Kalina Bowler. Uh, Kalina has a lot of interest and a lot of experience that I'm sure she's going to tell us all about. And so why don't we just dive right in. Kalina, can you tell us about your background and then kind of how you eventually got into podcasting? Sure, absolutely. I um, started at my career after college. I went to Howard University in D.C. and I met some graduate students there who have already been making connections in the production world. So when one summer, a, a colleague of mine, also from Atlanta, happened to be home from her graduate studies. I'd already graduated undergrad. And I was, uh, <laughs> was kind of down because I said, oh, I, maybe I should move to Hollywood or maybe I should, you know, do something because I'm, you know, I'm back in Atlanta and there's not much going on. This is 2005. And she called me one day and she said, Hey, how about you come on this project for Sony BMG for Killer Mike? And they're only paying like 70 bucks a day, but we need someone literally to drive Killer Mike around town. I said, uh, yeah, I'm there. And of course, at the time I'd I had just gotten back from DC, so I didn't have my at my car yet. So my aunt graciously let me borrow her car for the day. Um, and literally from that job, I ended up having a 15 year career in production here in Georgia exclusively, or almost exclusively. I've done a few things out of town, but um, it's been a really, really, really good ride for me. Uh, I started in music videos been went and started doing commercials uh worked my way up from a pa to a production coordinator to production manager and then when i got into movies once they started um uh putting the legislation in for the tax incentives for different production companies i ended up working in the location department uh first as a pa worked my way through the location department and the majority of my career here in Georgia was on movies and television uh, episodic series. And today I am uh, currently taking a break for health reasons, but I decided to switch my um, focus into podcasting. And so from there, uh, my girlfriend and I started a podcast years ago, like four or five years ago called Real Snobs, where we literally talked about movies and TV. And GPB brought us on to a morning radio show that they had there to talk about different movies for the Valentine's Day weekend that was coming up that year. And from there, they offered me uh, a contract to do um, and my own podcast that I started independently called The Credits Podcast. And I've always been interested in the stories of how my fellow crew members got their jobs. So I decided that my podcast will focus on those people that you see, you know, as the credits roll by in every movie, but you don't really know who these people are and what they do. But there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of us that will work on any given production. And, um, and that's currently my focus now. So with podcasting, how do you see it interacting with popular culture at large? What podcasting, I feel, allows people to do, it it kind of deregulates media in a way, and it gives people an opportunity to explore and tell stories that otherwise many people wouldn't be able to. Sometimes, uh, well, not so much now, but years ago, film medium was very expensive to do something well. Um, nowadays, not so much with the invention of YouTube and, ha and what have you, but what podcasting does, it's even more accessible and it gives people the opportunity to just be who they are and express their views, tell stories, 
and be as creative as possible. Uh, it also, interestingly, kind of harkens back to the times where we used to have radio plays and different radio documentaries, and or I think you would call them radio documentaries. Um, and so we're we're seeing a resurgence of that, of a lot more independent media, and it gives us the opportunity to not have to go to big networks in order to put our creative content out there. I think it's great. Um, it's really impacted society, you know, from going out there and, and f trying to find uh, killers or, you know, introducing a new type of culture to the popular culture uh, or new stories to the popular culture. Um, I think it's been very impactful and it's only getting bigger. You touched on this some already, but can you talk a little bit more about how you see podcasting making more space in culture for more diverse voices? What I personally am seeing is because so many more people have access through this medium of podcasting, it's giving more people the, the exclusive content that they like or being able to reach out and see something different if they want to. It's about choice and cho having choice in the marketplace is only a great thing, specifically in this capitalist society that we have. Um, people like to listen to, view, watch uh, content that relates to them, but they also sometimes want to venture out and do something new and podcasting for me has been the easiest way to streamline to a specific audience. For instance, with the credits, what I wanted to do was t was really have it be a platform and almost a, a reference guide for people who are interested in getting into the business and really just don't know all the various jobs that are in the business, right? Um, because that was me when I started. I knew there was, you know, even though I studied film in school, they talk about the big net credit names, the pro producer, director, writer, actors, um, maybe Best Boy Griff, because that sounds cool, no one knows what it is. Um, but then you get in and you realize there's an entire apartment, department called the Greens Department, or properties, or like mine, locations. No, no one really thinks that there's an entire department that their sole job is to go out and scout locations for people to film. Um, visual effects departments, stunt departments, and, and it can keep going. And so finally what podcasting is doing is giving people who want to hear about or learn about or just be entertained by specific types of content. They can find almost anything, you know, out there um, that they want. And I feel like that is what's in vogue now. That's the thing. Like, oh, you know, oh, I'm interested in doing it. Oh, there's a podcast for that, right? What was that thing that used to, they used to say back in the day? Oh, there's an app for that. Literally, there's a podcast for whatever you're interested in. And it's only making the world more open to any and everybody. And, but it's also shrinking the world. So, Someone in Bangladesh is not that far away now because they're able to tell the story and it's instantly available, you know, through social media and the internet. So yeah, it's, for me, it's changed my life personally and it's changing the lives of people every day. And it's, like I said earlier, it's only getting bigger and it's it's got a really bright future. So being able to understand the medium is going to be important in the, you know, this 21st century. Awesome. Thanks so much. We really appreciate you speaking with us today. Yes. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening. You can listen to more episodes and find resources for teaching podcasting at podcastpedagogy.com. You can email the show at info at podcastpedagogy.com.